David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. You know, I like when a pen surprises me. Maybe it's a pen that uh, didn't necessarily excite me right out of the box, uh, but after I tested it for a while, it really won me over. And today I have one of those pens for you. I didn't think much of this pen when I first saw it, but my mind was quickly changed. What pen is that? It is the Y Studio Resin. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Y Studio resin, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Kenro Industries, the US distributor for Y Studio, for providing this pen on loan for review. Y Studio is a company based out of Taiwan. Uh, the company was founded back in 2012 and their design aesthetic has been focused on simplicity and minimalism. The pen arrives in this thick cardstock box. On the front it says here the weight of words. And then inside there is a little instruction manual. And then we have the pen. This is, let me set this aside, the Y Studio resin. Uh, y Studio has another similar model called the Brassing Portable Fountain Pen, uh, which, as the name would imply, is made from brass. And it has a little uh, notch, a hole on the top, so you could tie it into a backpack or bag or something like that. As the name of this pen would imply, it is made from an acrylic resin uh, with a smooth matte surface. It's available in three different colors. There is a black, a white, and then this model here, the red. Um, while it is made from resin, uh, it does have a brass core in the barrel, so that help adds uh, a little bit of weight to this pen, which is a good thing. Uh, and both the cap and barrel are hexagonal, which, with six facets each. Let's start by taking a look at the cap. On the top of the cap, there is a brass insert. I like that this has a bit of a pebbled finish to it. I think that that looks a little bit nicer than a smooth surface. The cap is clipless, uh, but the faceted design does a really good job of preventing this pen from rolling around on your desk. Uh, the cap does angle up just slightly, and then there is a fairly large step down to the barrel, which is straight. Near the end of the barrel is the only branding on this pen, where it has the Y Studio logo and the company name. Then on the end of the barrel, similar to the cap, there is a brass insert, but this one is a bit different. Rather than being pebbled like the one on the cap, this one has the spiral lathe marks. Now, the pebbling and lathe marks are something that I personally didn't really even see well with the naked eye. It's just something I noticed when using a loop to check out the pen. I just thought it was interesting that they had different treatments on each of those. Um, well, more that the one on the cap had a treatment and the one on the barrel did not. The cap easily snaps off, and underneath we have a Schmidt stainless steel nib. The nib is a bit on the small side. Schmidt uses a proprietary numbering system on their nibs and don't necessarily conform to the standard, you know, number four or five or six type nibs. This nib is smaller than a standard number five, but larger than a four. Uh, the nib is available in either fine or medium. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a raised circle, which serves a dual purpose of capping the pen, as well as working as a stop for your grip. The section then angles up at a fairly even angle until a smooth transition to the barrel. Uh, even though this section is brass, I don't find it to be slick. Um, the angle isn't so much that your grip will travel down. Plus, I tend to lag my thumb slightly back in my grip, uh, which, with this smaller section, places it a bit more on the plastic barrel and gives me a good grip as well. Uh, this pen does feel comfortable in my hand. The brass inner tube I mentioned earlier helps add a bit of weight to the pen, which makes it feel more substantive and less lightweight. Um, now, the material does feel a bit plasticky, but in the case of this pen, I don't feel that that's a bad thing. Um, it feels like plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. Um, it's a rather sturdy pen that will take a bit of a beating. Um, I would have no issues in you know, throwing this pen in the bottom of a backpack or a pouch with a bunch of other pencils or pens and things like that. Um, it does post, and it does post securely. 
The resin is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter uh, may be provided. I say maybe because I have seen some retailers which say one is included and others which specify that it is not. So you wanna pay attention to that if you choose to pick one of these up. Um, with the aforementioned brass inner tube, it would not be advisable to eyedropper this pen. The Y-Studio resin is available from a number of retailers and sells for $71.95. While I do feel that's on the high end in regard to evaluation for this pen, I don't feel that price is outrageous or over the line. Uh, while the Y-Studio resin is simplistic and minimalistic in its design, as you'll see in the writing sample, it performs very nicely, and I do care for the basic look. Uh, it's an interesting option in order to round out a collection. So, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Y-Studio resin. Uh, here it is with a Lamy Safari. This is the petrol color, which was a limited edition color from a few years back. Here it is with a Faber-Castell Loom. Uh, and then here it is with a Twisby VAX 700R, and this is the Iris. If you haven't seen the review of this, this thing is amazing. And you could check out the very cool nib treatment here. If you could still find any of these, they pretty much are sold out. Uh, if you could find one, I would strongly recommend picking one up. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Caveco Skyline Sport. Uh, here it is with a Pilot Stella 90S, uh, also known as the Stargazer. Uh, and then also finally is a pen that I just recently picked up, one of my most recent acquisitions or my most recent acquisition, which is something pretty amazing, which is the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in the primary manipulation material from Jonathan Brooks. Uh, this thing is just amazing. Jonathan makes some of the best materials out there. Uh, the Leonardo pens I have found to be outstanding. This uh, Momento Zero Grande size is perfect for me. And I just love the coloring on this pen. Uh, and the uh, 14 karat gold nib on here works fantastic. Or is it 18? No, it's 14. Uh, the 14 karat gold nib on here is outstanding as well. So I am very much liking my new purchase here. And that's what it looks like in comparison to the Y Studio. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Loom, then here it is with the Safari, uh, and then finally here it is with the Momento Zero Grande. So, here we go with the writing sample for the Y Studio. It's a lowercase y and a lowercase s. And this is resin. This is a medium stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using today is Colorverse Andromeda. This is what the ink looks like. It's kind of a dark maroon, and then it has a nice golden or yellowish sheen to it. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to the Ferris Wheel Press Royal Rhubarb, as well as Pilot Orochizuku Yamabudo. This is what the Colorverse bottles look like, the larger bottles, the 65 milliliter ones. I think this is a really cool shape. Uh, plus the neck of the bottle is wide enough that you can get just about any pen in there. So, let's have a take a look at the rest of the writing sample. Um, I'm really liking this nib. I will say that I well, that I think that Schmidt nibs are a little bit underrated. They're not really used that much. Uh, I know Bennu uses them, and there's a few other companies, but uh, the ones that I have tested perform very nicely. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here, but you can get a fair amount for 
a stainless steel nib. With the, putting a little bit of pressure, you can get a decent amount there. Uh, in regard to ink flow, I do find that this medium nib is rather generous. In regard to reverse writing, it's slightly scratchy, but it gets the job done. And then in regard to some fast writing, There's no issue with the feed keeping up at all. So there we have the Y Studio resin. Uh, it's something that I, I like the minimalistic looks uh, to it, and I uh, think that it's something interesting to potentially add to a collection. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.